Here we go, Christian! Everybody. So that was Saturday's race for the Breakneck Point Trail Runs by Red Newt Racing. I keep calling it the Breakneck Ridge Half Marathon, combined with the Solomon Golden Trail Series Half Marathon. I just wanted to break down some of the gear that I was using yesterday. I thought some people might be interested. My calves are still rock hard and cramping from just all that work going up and down the mountain, so I figured we'd just do a casual one today, and I'd talk you through a little bit more of what was going on out there for the race itself and fuel and things that I ended up using and some of the decisions that I made while I was out there that I really didn't talk through in yesterday's video, which was just the, the race video or race vlog. So check that out if you haven't already and let's dive into some of the other information that you might wanna go over today. So first things first, let me talk a little bit about the course because this was the first year that this was part of the Solomon Golden Trail series. And here's some of the things that they have to say about this course just to get you a sense of how difficult it is. They say that it has more vert per mile and technical pitches than all but a handful of courses in this country and ground and terrain is just very difficult. The total elevation that I got on my watch through Garmin and Strava was about 4,200 feet, but I think the course itself, when they map and do the GPX file, it's right around like 4,000 or 4,100 feet, so very close to accurate on the watch. It's somewhere around or just over 4,000 feet of elevation that you go up and down throughout the course. It's not one single climb, but it's maybe 1,000 feet and then down, and then 1,000 feet and down, and over and over, that sort of just relentless course elevation change uh, in really very short spurts and quick succession it's it's really less than a mile that you're gonna climb a thousand feet then you're gonna go down again in less than a mile get some flat trail maybe some rolling hills and then another you know thousand foot climb boom and then down another thousand feet it's just over and over and over so what was the gear that I used to get me through this race? Let's start off very simple with the hat. I just used this very simple Path Projects hat. Very breathable, you know, mesh with holes in it. You can see right through it. It's just something to keep the sun out of my eyes as it comes over the horizon in the early morning and towards the afternoon again as it gets overhead. You just want to be able to block that sun out of your eyes. When it comes to hydration, I did need to bring some with me on the course. There is only one aid station at about mile seven. I'm going to need some hydration and gels to carry me throughout those gaps. So I used a pretty common Solomon S Lab uh, chest, you know, pack with two pockets in the front for water, extra pockets all over the side for phones and things like that. But really, all I brought with me was my water and some gel, which I used two regular Morton gels and two gel caps with the caffeine in it. I use both of these gels every about 45 minutes, except for the last one that I took, probably 30 minutes after the, the second to last gel that I took. And I went regular Morton, regular Morton, calf, calf, regular Morton again to finish off the day. So everything I was able to carry fit in here very nicely. I actually brought some body glide in the back as well as just the extra race shirt that they gave me because I already had left my car sort of down at the bottom of the camp. So I ended up just bringing it with me on my back and it all worked out very nicely. To actually hold the water, I used two of these just Amphipod with extra long straws uh, water packs. They look like they're 600 milliliters. Now, this was something that I didn't necessarily like to use in the past. I don't really like the bottles on my front. I prefer the backpack. The problem is the only reservoir that I have for a backpack right now is a whole two liter reservoir. And this reservoir is just huge. It's more water than I needed for the race itself. It wasn't like I was gonna be out there all day on my own. So I didn't wanna use the bigger backpack that I would have to use to carry that water. I think that's the extent of the clothing you're really gonna care about. I did use these two in one Hoka shorts. Uh, just sort of have a long liner that goes on the thigh, as well as a race t-shirt from the Brooklyn Half Marathon last year underneath that water vest. So all very simple. I think I used some stance socks. And for those shoes, I decided to go with my pair of the Hoka EVO Speed Goat. Really nice shoe. I'll put the weight on your screen now because honestly, I forget. They don't make it anymore, so I really can't tell you about it in a way that you would go out and buy it. But it is supposed to be somewhat 
combined with the new Speed Goat 5. They stopped making the EVO version. I think they lightened the regular Speed Goat and it's somewhere in between right now, but I still love the true EVO Speed Goat. A good amount of cushion for those longer days. You can see there's a pretty good stack height. The other choice I was thinking about was my Nike Peg 4 uh, GTX if it was going to be a little bit wet. It was wet out there, but ultimately I have to say the EVO Speed Goat, every time I went through a stream or really stepped in something wet and mucky, it was dry within like I'd say two minutes. It really dried up very quick. So whatever's going on with the breathable upper is just excellent to really let that water come out of your shoes and you're right on your way again without really thinking too much about it. I did get a little bit of a blister sort of on my arch towards my heel. And uh, that was just again, I think, cause I got wet pretty early doing some stream crossings and it just happens. But you know, over the course of four hours, it's a very, very mild, mild blister. And they worked out very well with the socks I chose from Stance as well. Just to show you the race shirt from the event as well, we have this Breakneck Points Trail Runs shirt. And now I'm the owner or official participant in a Solomon Golden Trail Series event. Again, I think that's pretty neat. Uh, I don't think there's that many of them throughout the year and throughout the country. They're just notably difficult trail courses out there for like experienced mountain runners. And again, it's just really cool to have been a part of that even though I wasn't expecting or didn't actually realize that all these things were coming together in my local race. Before I move on to just some of the decisions I made on the course and talking a little bit about the race itself, I just wanna thank Brad Finn Runs. Some of the clips that you see today came from him. He was out there supporting his wife. He's someone who happens to follow the channel. So when he saw me and recognized me, he did me a huge favor and took some video clips out on the course where he was at the start at a particular river crossing and at the finish. It was a huge help and a huge just kind gesture to be willing to film me and send me some clips. So some of them are in this video and again, just thank you to Brad for you know sending me those clips and connecting with me at the race. So now let's talk a little bit more about my strategy on the course in case you want to run it in the future. I highly recommend it. The race kicked off in a new location, same base camp, just a slightly different trailhead that was supposed to have a little bit of a wider um, like you know path. Last year it was very, very single file coming out of the starting line, and this year they wanted a little bit more room, so I think that was a smart choice by them, especially with it being some of these bigger important races for some people in these championship series. You know, you want to have room to really start the way you want to start and not get stuck behind people. So it was nice that it was a little bit more open. You know, you can see in all the video clips that I got out of the start, there's at least, you know, five, six people wide for most of that trail. And it only goes down to about three people wide in the first mile or so of the race. It's a big thousand foot climb right off the bat. Like I said in some of the pre-race videos, I wanted to take that very slowly, somewhere maybe close to 18 to 20 minutes per mile because it's just a lot of elevation in one shot. Your legs are still, you know, sort of cold to an extent and you really haven't gotten into the race so you don't want to burn out while you're fresh and then really just kill the second half of your run. I think this went well. There's always people around you who are going to be running or walking around your pace. Some people just hike all of the uphills. Honestly, my strategy was pretty close to that. Anytime the pitch started to go up a little bit too much, I just put on the brakes and I took a nice speed hike up the hill to preserve myself and really think long-term of how am I gonna get through the whole course in under four hours, which was my time goal. The course itself is beautiful. There's reservoirs, there's lookout points, there's the, some of the higher peaks. Honestly, right when we came over the fire tower, we were looking out over the mountain. All of a sudden, I see New York City in the distance, full skyline, clear as day, just really neat. I honestly never knew you could see, you know, again, clear as day, New York City right off the mountain from here where I'm living. Uh, it's just really neat and uh, something that I think was a highlight for a few people that were able to see the city from where we were. Uh, you could just hear people around going, oh my gosh, like that, there it is. Wow, it's so clear today you can actually see the city. So that's a really nice experience. You know, people love views when you go up these mountains and honestly, it, it is part of it. Just even if you think it's silly, once you get up there, once you're pushing yourself and looking around, it's just such a, a beautiful place to be out there in the mountains somewhere where you really can't get to unless you're willing to push yourself and climb and hike and uh, you know the payoff is obviously the view. 
Now throughout the first half of the course, before the first aid station, I had drank about half of my water. And I could feel, you know, since it was on the front of me and not on the back of me, about how much water I had left. I was able to gauge, you know, was I drinking enough? Was I drinking too little? You know, am I gonna start chugging down water in the second half? And ultimately I decided I was on track with my water. I was drinking the amount I wanted and I still had about half left. So when I got to the aid station, I took a quick sip of a cup of electrolyte fluids and I forget it wasn't Gatorade or anything like that. It was just a different brand. So I forget what it was, but I took a, you know, a shot essentially of that electrolyte drink. I ate a couple strawberries that they had. They had like a table with fruit, some candy. They actually have Coca-Cola. Um, for a lot of the guys maybe running the marathon, it's gonna be a six, eight hour day for some people. So it kind of goes into that ultra marathon territory where you're eating and, and even having some caffeine and things throughout the aid stations. So for me, I didn't go that far. Just electrolyte drink. Didn't stop to refill my bottles. I felt very good. I thought strategy wise, hey, I don't wanna kill a few minutes right now. I'm gonna be all right. I know I have the water. So I made that decision to go straight to breakneck. And ultimately I think that was a good decision for me. So all in all, once I did make it back up the final couple climbs of the mountain, I did mention yesterday, this year I was in a group of people where last year I was more alone on that backside and it was very hard to get myself going again, but I was able to use the people around me and in front of me as you know a little bit of a rabbit to chase up the last hill and then to get me running again as we made our way sort of on the flat and downhill towards the finish line. I think I finished pretty strong. I was definitely depleted of energy. Uh, my legs were tired from all the climbing and running and I was really just making sure that if I did start to run it was focusing mostly on let me make sure my feet are landing where I want them to land because again my legs start to feel like jello after all that elevation so that you have a tendency to forget to pick up your leg to trip on a rock and I was just focusing on all right let me get moving but let me make sure that my feet are landing where I want them to land and let me make sure that I'm moving my body forward and not down onto the ground. <laughs> So it worked out just fine. And ultimately, like I said yesterday, I did come in under my four hour time goal, right around three hours and 50 minutes. So I had about 10 minutes to spare. And again, that's why on that backside, when I told myself, hey, you know, take a break, go for a little bit of a walk, remember the big picture goal, you know, walking sometimes, climbing up hills slowly, it's all a part of the game on these tough, tough courses. So I just let myself do that. And again, just had in my mind where I was and I was very aware what times I would have to hit each of the last three miles or so once we were making our way towards the finish line. So it worked out very well. And I'm very happy ultimately with the result. Once the race is done, you can jump right into that same cabin where we did the check-in, where you pick up your bib and everything. It converts to essentially a lunch service station. There are tacos that are out there. They have salted potatoes that are available for everybody to eat. And you can just go ahead and get as much food as you want, recover the food, the environment, the music, the camping. I mean, it is just an amazing experience out there. I think I said it was like a family barbecue yesterday and that's really what it's like. There was even a premiere of a trail running movie going on at 7 p.m., sort of like drive-in movie style in the field and campgrounds. So it was a whole, whole weekend event. People camp, you know, Friday into Saturday and then probably even Saturday into Sunday after the race. And it's just a really unique experience and environment if you've only done road racing. It's much more close. Somehow how you feel more connected to the people around you. I just, in my experience with road running, it's not as much like that as, as when it's on the trails and the mountains. So I'm really falling in love with that and loving that it's again right here in my own backyard. Once the race was done, I didn't go to the movie premiere myself. I don't even actually know what the movie is. Maybe I'll put it on your screen if I find it. But I decided to go home, hang out with Megan, and we went to a minor league baseball game that's right here in Beacon. So again, just all the stuff that's available to us right here in my town. We went out, had a drink at the stadium, watched the baseball game, and just enjoyed ourselves the rest of the evening. And as much as I hate to make it fill up or be more difficult for myself to get in, it's really an experience. I mean, it is challenging. It is 4,000 feet of elevation. It is something that if you've never climbed mountains or hiked or anything like that will be probably a shock to you if you're a complete road runner, but I still encourage you to think about it to come on up if you're from New York City, if you're in the area around New York or around the world, honestly, at this point, if it's going to continue to be this big of a race or this important of a race for several series, it's, it's a challenge. It's the hardest course in the Northeast, so they say, or something like that. And it's just a fun way to challenge yourself. 
there are people that hike it, you know, there's people that take it pretty slowly, so you don't have to feel bad about it. It's not a race where you need to worry about being better than everybody else. It's a race where you're out there trying to do the best for yourself and see what you can do and get out of yourself in a very challenging uh, set of conditions. So thank you again to everybody who set up this race at the Breakneck Point Trail Runs Half Marathon and Marathon. What a blast. And I just hope this little breakdown was something useful for any of you who might consider running this race in the future or just want to hear more about my story because my legs, again, are not ready to run just yet. So more resting, more massage gun, more stretching. I'll get in the gym probably a little later today and just work on some upper body, try and keep myself healthy, keep myself going, keep the momentum moving forward, but give the legs a little bit of break because in just two weeks, we've got the Brooklyn Half Marathon on the roads again have no idea what my goal will be, all things considered, coming out of this weekend, but we'll see, and we'll be out there running and filming. So thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and I hope to see you in the next video.